in the hook. Chris is going, you just made a bad line call, but, but look at the corners of her mouth. A little bit of a smile. You know what she's saying to herself? She's not really saying this, but this is the attitude. If this is the hand that's dealt me, bring it on. It's like, look, you won that point, but you're not winning the match. Let's go. Come on. Let's play right now. Does everybody see that? Versus this. Now, here's the beauty. If you take an athlete through truth and purpose, if you find out really the purpose, and they get everything in line, you can take that athlete who has that hang dog look, and you can help them respond to stress in a much more effective way. So we take everything, we do the, here's the energy charts again, we, we take, we go from the court to the classroom, back to the court, we try to do, to change it from the intellectualizing to the, to the on-court practice. Okay, I like to summarize, high positive you shine, low positive you coast, high negative you whine, low negative you're toast. <laughs> I think that kind of summarizes it very clearly. All right, so you see, you're, you're tennis players, young and old alike, you're gonna be in stressful situations. So it's what you do with the stressful situation. For example, our approach of stress is this. Stress of tennis is not bad. Stress of business and life is not bad. Stress is actually the stimulus for growth. To expand capacity, we're going to help your young tennis players and your seniors, your adults, get better. They have to get outside their comfort zone. They have to push beyond normal limits, followed by adequate recovery. And that, in fact, is the key. Stress is not the enemy. Stress is not the enemy. It's a lack of recovery that is the enemy. And that's in your life as a professional and in the lives of your tennis players that you teach. It's about how they recapture energy and how you recapture energy. We must renew energy periodically. In fact, our whole approach is it's not about, it's, it's about energy management. It's not about time management. It's about energy management. In the process of expending and recovering energy we call oscillation. But simply, everything about the human system oscillates. EEG from the brain does this. EKG from the heart looks like this. What does it mean if an EEG or an EKG looks like this? You don't have problems anymore. <laughs> so the process, and by the way, we know this to be a healthy way of living your life in business and in life. Tennis teaches us naturally. The stress of a point, the recovery of a point. The stress of a point, the recovery. That's why those of you that have heard me give my talk on the health benefits of tennis, this is one of the key issues of the health implications of playing our great sport. And I truly believe that. So when does then stress exposure cause breakdown rather than growth? I've got about two or three more slides and then we're going to show, show this videotape. When does stress exposure cause breakdown rather than growth? When there's one, a dramatic increase in demand and overwhelms capacity. You ever seen that happen on a tennis court? Somebody can handle a certain amount, a certain amount, and suddenly they snap. Or when there's sustained demand without intermittent recovery. You see that in, in burnout. The constant demand, or the perception, the constant, gotta be on, gotta be on, gotta be on, without recovery. So we see all those. So making changes that last require understanding that everything we do is automatic. We have to help understand the truth. We profile. I advise you to profile. Use video with the stroke analysis. Profile. Use video with movement. Show them where they need to really work on it. Video doesn't lie. It's a wonderful teaching tool. I know you've, you've probably heard, you've probably had several talks this week on the use of it. I encourage that a lot. Mental toughness. Video them during competitions. Talk to them about what they're doing in between points and on the changeover. That can help you a lot in taking a look at, at, at the issue of the habit. And we have to learn how to develop great rituals and performance. I mean, I obviously I'm biased with what I'm going to say right now because Jim Blair is my partner and, and I own that. If, if you believe I'm biased, I apologize. But I truly believe this was one of the greatest contributions uh, in the game over the last 20 or 30 years was when Jim was doing all the uh, profiling of the greatest players and he found out that the greatest players in the world have a very regimented routine in between points. Like when they made a mistake, the, the greatest players had a positive physical response. And it was very unique. And yes, 
there would be anomalies. And we could stand here, and I'll stay after if you want to talk about John McEnroe and everything else. But I will tell you that the majority of great tennis players have a positive physical response, they have, they have a phase of relaxation, then they have a phase of preparation, then there's a phase where they employ rituals before serving and before returning. And I found that fascinating. And I think that was a, I, I really believe, you know, some people, I, we hear it all the time. I mean, people are tired of the four stages and everything else. Okay, I understand, but you need to have something you're teaching your kids to, to do between points and on the changeover. And your adults. I mean, they need to learn a something to do. And I think this works quite well. And again, if you feel I'm biased on that, I apologize for that, but I own it. So, Here's Jim Currier talking to Lorenzo. We talk about how to, regardless of the skill level, whether it's a beginner and whether it's a world-class player. So before I show you the video, I'll share this with you. What we teach is spiritually, when you get out there and you're going to put yourself on the line, learn how to savor the moment and love the 